Welcome to the EEV Block. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 10, double digits. Woohoo! Now, my uh, previous blog on cheap Chinese multimeters and why they're so crap, um, that, you know, it stirred up a bit of controversy. And, um, well, not controversy, but, you know, people saying, oh, they're, they're not that bad. And, uh, but, yes, they are. And I've got a story to tell you. I was working at a company uh, once where we used, um, it was a factory environment where we were manufacturing a very expensive uh, product, you know, in the order of, you know, twenty to $30,000 each. And they were very difficult to rework. And we um, bought a bunch of cheap meters um, due to budget constraints for use out on the um, factory floor. And we had, uh, you know, um, technicians and operators, you know, testing these products with these cheap multimeters and um, one day uh, they measured one of the products and it you know it uh, failed it, it measured incorrectly so they looked up the standard um, failure procedures and they found that oh that reading they, they got indicated that there was a particular fault in the product which had a standard rework um, actually associated with it there was a standard procedure to fix that problem so, no worries, they didn't give it a second thought, they measured it once, the meter seemed quite accurate, and it gave them a reading, they measured it again, and same thing. And um, so they went, so they, well, they marked that product as bad, and it had to be reworked. And um, it turned out that the meter was actually giving a false reading. The cheap Chinese multimeter, the cheap, you know, $30 multimeter had failed, and it was given a bad reading, which just happened by accident to indicate a known fault. And they spent like, you know, thousands of dollars reworking this uh, product thinking that there's a fault with it because they got a bad reading on a cheap Chinese multimeter. And, um, you know, it's, yeah, you can say it's, you know, it's bad procedure and things like that. They should have checked it with a second meter, but because they had been seeing a lot of these problems recently and, you know, the meter seemed to be operating correctly, the operators, you know, said okay that's that's faulty and um you know they put it straight into rework and you know standard procedure but it cost them thousands and then the products were delayed going out the door which cost you know untold tens of thousands of dollars in delays and things like that to the customer and it's just not bad you know it's just bad news and so that's why a cheap chinese multimeter can cost you a hell of a lot of money and they're not worth using now there's another industry story I want to tell you about, and it's it's quite unusual. It involves a rubber band, a humble rubber band, and how this cost a company millions of dollars and a bad reputation. Now I won't name the company or the uh, product involved, but a standard um, assembly procedure to assemble the product involved the use of rubber bands, something like this. They were actually used to hold uh, wires, um, to actually bundle um, some wires, and I'll actually show you exactly how it worked and how it caused a problem that cost millions of dollars. Now, this actual um, product involved an acoustic um, sensor. It was an underwater uh, sensor, and I've got a whiteboard here, and I'll explain how it works. Okay, so let's explain it. Now, the product looked well, it had a cutout, a little well like this, and there was a little sensor inside there, which had some wires that ran off and it went down into the product. And there was this shell over the top, which had some holes in it. And now these holes were to allow uh, acoustic um, pressure to actually uh, flow in and out. And this uh, sensor actually measured that um, pressure. Now, what they used, because this was a product which looked like this, they actually used rubber bands inside to actually um, hold, hold the wires down when they assembled this plate on. Now, this wasn't a problem until one day somebody decided to change the rubber band. They couldn't get the existing one they used, so they just thought, oh, it's just a rubber band, we'll just order from anyone. So they went and ordered it, and um, they went and used it, no problems at all. But when these things got out into the field, you know, they manufactured you know, thousands of these. And they got out into the field and they found that because this was actually filled with an oil-based 
product, this actual cavity, uh, this new rubber band had actually swelled up. And it swelled up and it blocked off one of these ports. And so the uh, acoustic pressure was only coming in and out of one port. Or sometimes it would actually block, because there were two rubber bands in there, it would block off uh, two ports. But if it blocked off one, that ruined the acoustic performance of the product. Now, this was actually noticed by the customer out in the field after we had delivered thousands of these units out there. Because um, one, one product actually contained, um, you know, hundreds of these uh, sensors. So uh, just, you know, one product um, had potentially, you know, 50 or 100 uh, faults in it. And it um, seemed quite random. The uh, rubber bands, some would um, swell up and block the port, and um, others wouldn't. And uh, so it was really embarrassing, and the whole batch of products we sold to the customer were, uh, were you know, ruined. They were deaf. They didn't meet their performance targets, and performance was a key aspect of our product. So not only did uh, the product fail, but we didn't have a rework technique to actually fix these things, and we couldn't detect the fault either. So we had to design test jigs to actually uh, come up and, you know, to actually see if we could, which sensors were actually failing because they were actually parallel, a whole bunch of them were parallel, so you couldn't tell um, just based on the measurement from the uh, signal. You had to actually um, individually test each one, it was quite difficult. And then came the task of actually repairing these things and uh, eventually um, you know, came up with an idea to you know, design some custom drilling machine to drill through the metal plate and, and all sorts of things and it was really messy, I mean it worked in the end but it, but it cost millions of dollars. We had to rework, you know, millions of dollars worth of product, and the customer was without their product, losing revenue for, you know, months and months. And it was it's a it was a very small niche industry, and it was very embarrassing, and quite frankly, it almost ruined the company. So the moral of the rubber band story, well, even the most insignificant things and the smallest aspect of your product, if you change it it can have massive consequences down the track. So just be careful when you engineer any change into your product, whether it's a part, like this rubber band, or whether it's a process or some other step, you really have to be very careful and take it seriously. A rubber band can cost millions of dollars, and that's a real story. Yes, it's equipment review time again. And yes, again, I've got another multimeter, because I love them. And everyone else does too, they can't get enough of multimeter reviews. So here it is. This week, it's the Fluke 87 5 four and a half digit industrial multimeter. Now, this is Fluke's uh, best multimeter in their sort of um, standard range of multimeters without going to the fancy data logging ones like the um, 289 series, for example. This is the um, Series 5 which is um, different. I've owned like the Series 3 and owned and used like the Series 3 and the original 87 and they've been going since the 1980s or something like that. Now the first thing you notice about the Series 5 is that it looks um, a bit different to the Series 3, uh, the previous series and it's it's really just the rubber case that's actually different. The actual um, Multimeter itself is exactly the same shape and dimensions as, as the old one when you take it out of the case. The basic specs are um, four and a half digit, 0.05% uh, basic DC volts accuracy, and um, 6,000 count standard, standard display. So when you switch it on, it's actually 6,000 count. It's not four and a half digit. You've got to switch it into a special mode for that. Other improvements they've made, it's got a larger, brighter um, LCD display, it's much better. Um, it's finally got a battery door on the back, so you don't actually have to unscrew the case to change the battery, which was a, which was a real bad um, issue with the previous versions. Now, I can't say I'm a big fan of this new style case they've got. They've replaced the fantastic old flexible tilting bail, which you could use to hang the thing up on um, things or tilt it to just the right angle you actually need. Now they've got this new um, stupid plastic fixed, you know, tilting bale. It's not nearly as good as the old one. I don't know why they changed it. 